Hello, my name is Luang Kai, and I'm running for place in parliament as an independent candidate. Please, don't click away from this video. All I ask for you is to give me a few minutes of your time for me to convince you that I am the right choice to speak up for your issues and needs. So, what does Singapore mean to me? Well, from my observations, Singapore is a country where cardboard collectors treat the collection of cardboards as a form of exercise. It is also a country where, well, everybody has a car. In fact, me and my girlfriend, we have two. We are both professionals, we need to travel. Am I happy living in this country? Of course! If my father hadn't taken a boat to Singapore, I could be a Chinese national right now. Hey, if we hadn't separated in 1965, you and I could be Malaysians right now. Hey, regardless of race, language or religion, Singaporeans have been living harmoniously for a long time now. I've been hearing a lot of accusations about how people like us discriminate against the minority races in Singapore. There is nothing more than a baseless accusation. Nothing more. I love the Indians. I love Indian food. I love their nasi lemak, I love their mirror bowls, I love their nasi goreng. But things need to change. One evening, I drove to Little India and it was pitch dark. Not because there were no lights, but because there were too many Indians around. Congregations of such high density are walking time bombs and public disorder incidents waiting to happen. To prevent that from happening, communal areas such as playgrounds and work decks need to be fenced off from foreign workers. While Singaporeans do not criticise their parents' imperfections, when it comes to the government, oh, they criticise it freely for its slightest mistakes. For me, 6.9 million is not a target, it is not a stretch scenario. We have to restrain ourselves in a very disciplined way in order to ensure that we keep within this. I don't think I made a joke unwittingly, but um, anyway, I, I, I will manage immigration to make sure Singapore doesn't become too crowded. But you have to understand this. A Singaporean's first policy will not benefit the economy in the long term. So what if there's increase and unfair competition between locals and foreigners? So what? Retrenchment is good. If there's no retrenchment, then I worry. If I'm elected, I will ensure smooth entry for new citizens into our humble city-state. Yes, I'm fully aware that they don't have to serve NS before they attain their citizenship. But you see, the contributions of our national servicemen cannot be measured in dollars and cents. National service should be a privilege that belongs to Singaporeans. I promise to walk the ground and listen attentively to your needs. I suppose it's good to get the feel from the ground every now and then, you know, to, to, to really connect with the peasantry. But if you need some kind of financial assistance, please, by all means, get out of my elite, uncaring face. A smaller medicine means you are lazy and work less. Sell your HDB or rent it if you are poor. The HDB is not a bank. How much do you want anyway? Do you want 3 meals in a hawker centre, food court or restaurant? If you cannot afford chicken, eat fish! <sighs> My potential salary will be too high. I didn't ask for it. That was the rate for the job. You don't like the rate, I can't help it. As a matter of fact, I feel that if we don't increase the minister's salary by 60%, the government system will slowly crumble and collapse. Only rich or corrupt people will work for free, come on. But I can assure you it's not for the money because some of the 11 companies where I'm the director at pay me as little as $10,000 a year. $10,000! <sighs> but every month, when I receive my CPF statement, I feel so rich. And the best part is, I know the CPF money won't run away. But the CPF is not your money and you don't get to call all the shots. We are same same, but different. I would not believe that transparency is everything. Yes, I'm not perfect. Yes, I I make I, I make mistakes, occasionally. Yes, in Japan, the CEO and board of directors will call for for a press conference and take a deep bow. And in the good old days, they may even call me Harakiri. But instead of naming the individuals and developing a blame culture, we need to encourage a learning culture. People's pain and regret is punishment enough. Now in this election, my rival is simply not up to standard. The impression that he gives me is that he's a gangster. He's a gangster. Mr. Go Choktong was the prime minister at the time, and he shouted at Mr. Go Choktong. I was shocked to see a candidate behaving in that manner. He says he wants to be a full-time MP. As far as I know, he's not held a full-time job for a long time. All he does is write books, complain to the Huffington Post. Chuk Batten, Batten Togo Badminton, and presenting himself as a new man, reinvented, and yet unchanged, unregretful, and unrepentant. What's gonna happen? He's gonna swallow up Bukit Batok? Huh? For what purpose? To serve the residents of Bukit Batok? Or is Bukit Batok delicious because he wants to add it to the pot and help the town council with the deficit? Look guys, 
It's not the government's job to love Singaporeans. Because people from less developed countries don't know what life is, they're quite happy. They wake up, they brush their teeth, then they'll go farm, then they'll sleep or something. But do you want it that way? This is not Burger King, you cannot always have it your way. Nor is this a song by the Backstreet Boys. I will decide what is right, never mind what the people think. Without a natural aristocracy, society will lose out. Gang rape, after all, is democracy in action. Bukit Batok residents, I hope you give me the opportunity to be your member and voice in parliament. I believe I have the right skills, values and qualifications. I also believe I have the relevant job experience. And most importantly, I believe I have the character and integrity. Heck, I even have a full-time job. So, together, let's make Bukit Batok great again. With you, for you, for Singapore. And before I go, I want you to think about this. Think about all that I've just said and think carefully about what I'm going to ask you now. Will you vote for someone like me into parliament? If you won't vote for me, why would you vote for the PAP? Thank you.